Welcome to Intermediate Accounting 1 Tutorial 2 on Presentation of Discontinued Operations. This short tutorial will expand on the example contained in Tutorial 1, this time with emphasis on the Presentation of Discontinued Operations section of an Income Statement or IFRS Statement of Comprehensive Income. There are three learning objectives for this tutorial. The first is to review the Presentation of Discontinued Operations. Second, to calculate and present gains and losses from continued operation of a discontinued operation. And third, to calculate and present gains and losses on the disposal of a discontinued operation, also known as a DO. This tutorial is based on the Endeavor Corporation A example presented in Tutorial 1. It is recommended that you review Tutorial 1 first before proceeding with this tutorial. However, Tutorial 2 can be reviewed independently. Please make sure you download the related file so you can follow along. Here are the ASPI and IFRS income statements presented in Tutorial 1, with the Discontinued Operations section of each highlighted in yellow. Notice the presentation of the Discontinued Operations section is identical for both IFRS and ASPI. Therefore, the content and approach contained in this tutorial is applicable to both ASPI and IFRS. Earnings per share must also be disclosed for discontinued operations. This will be discussed in another tutorial. The remainder of this tutorial will focus only on the discontinued operations section of an ASPI income statement or IFRS statement of comprehensive income. And so our objective here is the calculation and presentation of the discontinued operations section. And remember, as described in tutorial one, a discontinued operation is a business unit or division that management has elected to dispose of. Before continuing with our illustration, here's a good opportunity to discuss some brief notes on discontinued operations. Recall from the discussion in tutorial one that the assets of the discontinued operation are classified as held for sale until ultimate disposal. Now, once that classification is made, there could be a loss arising on the reclassification of property, plant, and equipment to held for sale. And that classification would be based on the lower of cost or fair value less cost to sell. The Endeavor discontinued property, plant, and equipment in this case could have been either reported at the lower of cost or the fair value less cost to sell. We don't know because this example doesn't provide any details of what happened previously or, or what happened when the company management decided to discontinue the operation. If a write down to fair value less cost to sell was required, there would be no write down required if it's already carried at cost. Then that write down would have occurred in 2019. So once the DO is ultimately sold, as is the case for Endeavor, the held for sale assets are derecognized, and that's a fancy term for removing them from the books. So to review, our DO section could potentially be impacted by the following occurrences. So the first thing that can happen is there could be a loss on writing down assets to held for sale. So going from cost to a fair value less cost to sell, if that's the case. There could be income or loss from operating the unit after it has been classified as discontinued. And there could also be a gain or loss on the ultimate disposal. If the two things happen in the same year, if item one and three, so the company management determines or classifies the operation as discontinued and takes a write down to mark it down to lower of cost or fair value, less cost to sell. If that and the disposal happen in the same year, then those things, those items can be combined on a single line per IFRS 5.33. It would not be incorrect to disclose separately, but it just makes for easier presentation. The discontinued operations section comes after income from continuing operations, which may also be identified as income before discontinued operations. Either is acceptable. Next, we present the discontinued operations section found within the blue box. The first item in the DO section is the disclosure and presentation of any income or losses generated by operating the operation up until the point of disposition. And again, remember, the division or business unit up for sale is still fully operational, but any income or loss generated from the discontinued operation is disclosed separately from normal continuing operations. So in our example here, we continue to operate the services division and it generated pre-tax profit 
of 1,550,000 at a 35% tax rate that gives us a tax expense of 543,000 and we are reporting on a net of tax basis and so the proper disclosure shows in parentheses how much the tax impact is and the result on an after tax basis is 1,009,000. Now notice that the there is no detail of revenues and expenses. They're not provided on the in the discontinued operations section. So we don't need to worry about providing additional level of detail, the sources of revenues and expenses once an operation has been classified as discontinued. And if the business unit was not operational or didn't generate any income or losses, then this line just simply wouldn't exist. Or if Endeavor Corp didn't have any discontinued operations, the entire section wouldn't exist at all. Finally, we report any gains or losses on the final disposal of the business unit, presuming that it is actually sold or wound down in the fiscal period. If the operation had not been disposed of in the year ended December 31st, 2020, then this line item highlighted in the blue box would not exist. It would appear in the final year of disposition. Alternatively, there could be a situation where once management has classified the operation as discontinued, there may be an impairment required to adjust the division or the operation to the lower of cost or fair value less cost to sell. Any impairments on long-lived, i.e. non-current assets associated with the discontinued operation would be shown in this area instead of the gain and loss and disposal because of the unit would not have been disposed of yet. In our case, a $3.2 million loss was incurred in the disposal year of the services division and the tax savings that resulted from the loss is calculated to be 1.12 million based on our 35% tax rate. The final amount reported is therefore a loss on the disposal of the services division of 2,080,000 net of a tax savings of $1,120,000. And here is the completed discontinued operations section, followed by the final income amount. Recalling from tutorial one, the income from continuing operations was $4,460,000. The discontinued operations resulted in a net loss of $1,071,000, comprised of positive uh, income from operating the operation less the sale on disposition. So net income is $3,389,000. The ASPE uh, version of the statement would stop here. And of course, if we had other comprehensive income, the OCI uh, would appear here in an IFRS continued statement. Our work so far presumes that there was an operating profit on the discontinued operation. But what if there was an operating loss? And so what we'll do now is assume that instead of a gain of 1,500,000 or an operating profit of continuing to operate the DO, we are going to incur a $1.5 million loss on operation of the DO and see how this changes our presentation. As you'll begin to see, the approach is now identical to the previous model, except that uh, the division incurred an operating loss of 1.55 million rather than a profit in fiscal 2014. So we begin with our income from continuing operations and then we show our discontinued operations starting this time with a loss from the operation of the services division. The numbers are still the same but just the opposite sign so a one and a half or 1.55 million dollar loss at a 35 percent tax rate means the loss reported on a net of tax basis of 543,000 is a loss of one million and nine and then we did not change uh, the information relating to the loss on the disposal of the services division so this piece is exactly the same a 3.2 million dollar loss at a 35 percent tax rate gives us a net loss on disposal of two million and eighty thousand dollars now here is our completed discontinued operations section except that instead of profit of three million three hundred and eighty nine thousand there is a net a profit of 1,371,000. So the company is still profitable uh, because the income from operations of 4,460,000 exceeds the combined loss from operating the discontinued operation and the loss on disposition.
We will now cover one final variation, this time assuming that Endeavor sold the services division at a gain of $3.2 million versus a loss of $3.2 million. And we will also continue under the presumption that the discontinued operation generated a loss still of $1,550,000. As shown before, we begin with our income from continuing operations of 4,460, and then we start with the discontinued services operations section and the operating loss from operating the services division at 1,009,000, which is our $1.55 million loss on an after-tax basis. But now, instead of a loss on disposal, Endeavor reports a gain on disposal of 2,080,000. But instead of a tax savings, there is a tax expense. So still reporting net of tax of $1,120,000. And so the result is a net of $2,080,000, but this time positive. And so now is the final result with net income of $5,531,000, comprised of income from operations of $4,046,000 and additional income generated by the discontinued operation of $1,071,000 that consists of an operating loss on an after-tax basis of $1,009,000 offset by a gain on the sale of that services division of $2,080,000. So now let's cover some important points to remember. First is that the presentation of the discontinued operation section is applicable to both IFRS and ASPE. Second, the DO must re re be reported separately below income from continuing operations, so there is a sequence. Third, discontinued operations are presented net of tax with tax amounts disclosed. Fourth, discontinued operations can include gains and losses from continuing to operate the discontinued operation until final disposition. Fifth, the DO can include gains and losses from the final disposition of the discontinued operation itself. And the final disposition gain and loss may be in a subsequent fiscal period as well. So you may not always see both gains and losses from continuing to operate and gains and losses on disposal. You may not see both of those in the same fiscal period. Finally, the discontinued operation can also include gains and losses of the initial revaluation to either the lower of one original cost or to the fair value less cost to sell of the discontinued net operations net assets that are classified as held for sale and then annually thereafter until the final disposition. So this concludes tutorial two. We hope you found it useful.